In the Revishal Citizens Militia, there is only one Officer Superstar. This is his story. We leveled up, and so we have five skill points to spend. I'm going to wait on spending them for the moment. Let's go... Let's go follow up on some of the stuff we learned in the church. I'm sorry this episode didn't come out yesterday. I was fighting a stomach bug all weekend, and it finally beat me. So we're going to head over to the doomed commercial area. You'll notice I'm not going to use the key we got from Call Me Manana for the quest Everart, or the task Everart assigned to us. Not sure I want to do it at all. So until I decide, we're just not going to do it. It feels a little bit slimy to me. Okay, we're going to go to the Doom commercial area. Go in the back door. We could do this without Kim. Because we could put him to bed, but we're not going to do that yet. Let's see what we can do here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is equip our multi-tool in place of the bag. Our plus two multi-tool of awesomeness. That is the power. So we could unplug this thing too, and I guess it would thaw. But that might destroy the backup. This <laughs> orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. So that, uh, as soon as we touch this thing, we, the help Suna with her project task got updated. So we, oh my gosh. We still only have a 17% chance. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're gonna leave. Wait, let's turn the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. In the distance, you hear water dripping. We're gonna leave, and then we're gonna go here. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. This multi-tool is like three or four feet long. Like, that is one heck of a tool. All right, we're going to unplug the ice cream maker and let it thaw a little bit. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Very smart. Opening the lid should be much easier after the ice cream maker has defrosted. Let's see if the ice cream maker immediately defrosts, or if we have to wait. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. All right, I should have done this before, but now we're going to check to see if there's anything we can do to add a physical instrument besides obviously taking some drugs. All right, let's see about physical instrument. No, 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 no. Oh boy. Oh, okay. Tank top. Okay. We have one more. All right, let's give it a shot. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. All right, I really want into this thing. So if we fail this, I'm probably either going to spend a point or drink some wine. Let's crack open the lid. Ice squeaks oh, beneath your Kavalzun okay. multi-tool. But your fingers slip away from the tool. The lid shut as tightly as before. That is disappointing. And it's already unplugged. There's not much else to do other than wait for it to defrost or bulk up and get stronger. Oh, so we could wait longer for it to defrost. Let's uh, let's drink some wine and see if that helps us, because that should help with our physique. Minus one morale, though. I'm willing to risk it now that our morale is so good. We're going to put this here. Let's try it. Uh, how do we interact with it? Oh, right. We leave here. And then there we go. Why? Well, hello. Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's where the magic happens. Yeah. Magic. Like giving us more physical instruments. 
Light reflects off the green glass of the Commodore Red. The gods have been generous. Better pop it open before they change their minds. This may be a terrible idea given that we're trying to go dry, but you know, you have to make certain sacrifices in the name of police work. Wow, the gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. A child could have done it. Yes, that's what the world needs is drunk children. Open the bottle, please. There's a satisfying pop as the cork jumps out, and the hair on your back rises like an army at attention. You've been here before. Welcome back, detective. You're home now. Sure are, electrochemistry. Maybe a little bit too comfortable. What will be the repercussions if I take that sip? Nothing. Some mental stuff. Nothing to be worried about. Physically, you'll be strong as an ox. Sounds good to me. Let's take a sip. A golden sun melts down your throat. Its rays filling your nostrils with sunshine. Your stomach melts from it into a happy, gooey mess. So does your mind. All the bad things are melting. You're you again. A real cop. A real detective. Incredibly well done. Very nice. So we've got 60 minutes now of plus one physique. Our morale took a hit, but of course we can afford that now because we are a magnesium-based life form. We actually completed one of our oldest tasks to find booze and drink it, and we gained 30 experience for doing so. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's an alcohol button. Alcohol gives plus one to physique skills. Physical instrument, half light, electrochemistry, endurance, pain threshold, and shivers. This is good before rolling a white check, but damages your morale. And remember... From the void we came, and to the void we must return. Yes, okay. We will eventually return to the void whether we like it or not. So, now we find out whether... This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand crank ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. So, we learned a valuable lesson here. Taking the drugs after the fact does not unlock white checks. I guess we could have figured that out from the way the tutorial described all the other drugs we've taken. I stepped away for a bit, but left the game on. When I returned, I found Gim and Superstar doing calisthenics. How ridiculous is this? Okay, well, that was interesting to return to. Let's take a look at physical instrument. Flex powerful muscles, enjoy healthy organs. Cool for muscle men, bare knuckle brawlers, gym teachers. Physical instrument is not only your muscles and your skeleton, it is your ability to use them effectively. It enables you to do push-ups, sit-ups, knockout punches, and 360 degree spin kicks. It's a one-size-fits-all solution to thriving and surviving in the physical world. We did read this once before, I believe. At high levels, physical instrument breaks doors, chains, and bones, and it makes you laugh at the Namby pansies who can't. You'll be manned up, encouraging others to curl iron until they're manned up too. At low levels, however, you'll have a hard time arresting anyone who isn't infirm or already dead. Indeed, engaging in physical confrontations could leave you in either state. Yes, we did read this before because, in fact, we have previously put one point into physical instrument. I very much want to drop a point into physical instrument so that we can try this, but I, I can't justify it, honestly. I don't think that's who Superstar is, and it feels like I'm just gaming it then. If we're going to spend some of our five points, I would maybe do it in, a, in opening another slot in our thought cabinet, or maybe put it into one of our more innate skills, like electrochemistry or composure or visual calculus, anything really in intellect, or, or perhaps suggestion, although we've already put three points into that. I'm not really jonesing to spend the points. Let's go inspect the body. see what we can do with the body. The bear's eyes are still glowing red. It's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. We're going to try this. 
It's a 42 percenter. We're probably going to fail it like we usually do, but here we go. Uh, okay. You touched the dead man's morale was critical. His skin is cold, light blue and silvery in the light of the fridge. You still have no idea where to begin or what to even do with him. It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safe here until then. Wow. Okay. This has been a bit of a bust. I do recall that just before we went to sleep last time, we were given the impression that we should that we should do some drugs before we go to sleep this next time. Might be time to go to sleep, I'm not sure. Maybe we can use the multi-tool on the door. On the secret passage door. Let's try it. It's green. I don't know if it was always green, though. Oh, wait, no, it's white? No, it's green. Let's try it. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. Okay, let's try to push on it. I don't think this is going to work. The door does not budge. All right, let's touch it. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. It leads to a side building adjacent to this one. The old building next to this, half ruined. Whatever is behind it must be older. Well, that didn't work. It's worth a shot, though. So I was just about to go to bed, uh, and then I realized that we wanted to start the day with more morale. So, or more, excuse me, more magnesium to heal our morale. So I ran over to the free, and then it was closed because it's so late. And then I decided since I was there to run around the harbor and, and everything else around this area and found absolutely nothing. So I've actually cut that out. But I also realized there were a couple of things that I forgot to do in here. I forgot to check the radio computer. And I believe we have a check of some sort with the dice maker, which I don't know if we can make. But if we're there, well, once we go to the radio computer, uh, I will check in our task list and see, or excuse me, I'll check in our white checks list and see if it's worth it to do. Oh, and I think I need to put on some equipment again because I think we should have one more point of morale here. So let me do that. And while we're here, since we know it's gonna be dark in here, I'm gonna put on the flashlight. And um, let me see, there was something else we were wearing. Oh, this, yeah, right, we wanted our volition. Yes, okay, all right, we're good to go. We are good to go. Oh, I guess I could have checked what the white check was while we were there uh, for the dice maker, but that's okay. Let's do this. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Let's insert the production schedule. Like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. All right, let's hit it. The speaker comes to life. Static seeps through the machine's plane and magnetic driver. An old lady greets you. Her voice sounds a hundred years old. Oh, it is our old friend Yvonne. Good evening, Fortress Accident en rue de Saint-Gazelaine. This is East Indian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? It is. Let's try the password for the production schedule. Good. Please repeat the password. Let's say afterlife, death. Good. I've unlocked the production schedule. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Awesome. Really? She just used the same password? Maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. Maybe they're not. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? No, that's all for now, Yvonne. Thanks so much. Thank you, and goodbye. Goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. 
Let's press print. With a quiet determination, the printer starts printing, a piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. A black crisscross of letters covers its surface. Let's read the printout. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, about Wirral Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. Look at all this juicy stuff we can do now that we've used the password. So let's see. Read about capital. I want to know about money. Read about the workforce. Tear off the printout and throw it away. I don't think so. How about we start with the workforce since that's what we care about most in general as Superstar. Uh, who worked there and how long? Fortress Accident employed 18 people. The bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts. How expert could they have been if the whole thing went under? And a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Perolidon in the basement to escape his obligations. Ooh, I wonder if we can find some Perolidon down there that he hid. But on the other hand, their obligations were piling up at an inhumane rate. A rate that could only be amended by Perolidon. I see your point, Electrochemistry. I see your point. Why did Fortress Accident have so many concept artists? Wait, why did a radio game need so many artists? It didn't. It didn't need so many concept artists? No, definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy though, especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skip to work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. Oh, interesting. I have certainly never experienced mental health issues and I have the most professional of sleep schedules, I say as I'm recording this very late at night. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. Of course he did. Let's read about the capital. I want to know about the money. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. I wonder what the definition of insane is in this case. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 Ria, but then came the delays. <laughs> the delays always come. Without delay, in fact. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 Ria, with only wow. half of the game finished. Wow. I mean, I guess from the Wild Pines perspective, when they have billions of dollars worth of revenue, that's not a big deal. But, oh my gosh, 400,000 real is a lot of money for us. 400,000 real? Yo, my yo. These guys knew how to party. <laughs> I guess so. Gosh, where did they get all this money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Oh, I have no doubt. Let's skim through the production schedule, whatever it is. The production schedule depicts their glorious descent into bankruptcy. Because of the concept artists? Not the concept artists. It wasn't even the writers. With their panic attacks and three-hour lunches. <laughs> and who was it? It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large, and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. Ah, lack of focus. They tried to make a four million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. Don't we all? They couldn't. You know what? I could have bridged the gap. No, you couldn't have. Oh no, we failed. Oh, we failed by 10 points. Wow, we failed epically. What do you mean I totally could have? Definitely not. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> not a chance. Yeah, I guess not. Even then, success remained within an ever-narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. Oh, really? That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. Oh, we heard about the Valley of the Heads before. I think Suna mentioned it. The what? At the 11th hour, the lead designer, Jimsk-born Suliswaf Jalisa, decided that what we're out untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. And that was the Valley of the Heads, I assume. This place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. How many heads were there? So many. The last count, there were approximately 
10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. So how many combinations could you make out of that? Do you really want to know? This seems to be a calculation here, but it may take a while. Oh, let's see what the mainframe does with that calculation. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's keep going. <laughs> this is great. This is great. <laughs> oh, no. The lieutenant taps his foot impatiently, his arms folded tight against his chest. This is exactly what I was hoping would happen. He's dying for a cigarette. Come to think of it, you are too. All right, electrochemistry. I think we even have some cigarettes. <laughs> the mainframe's just gonna keep going. Uh, let's keep going. I wonder how long we can do this. Oh boy. Oh, we got something. What if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? Oh boy. See, if we had much more interfacing, we could have done it. Let's just let the numbers wash over us. Oh no, it went all to zero. And that's it. Okay, so what, what, that's what did them in? Well, yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. Oh, that must be the anomaly Suna mentioned in the church log. On the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. I bet they did. What is clear is that one day an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel Front, just as the Wirral Untethered project was being compiled that day. Aha, uh -huh, so maybe the Valley of the Heads compilation took the whole thing out. And the anomaly caused all the data to get lost in the air? When the project was returned, it was completely blank. The team spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider. But despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. Well, we know there was a copy of the game, a backup. That's what we were sent here for. Let's say this. What? They lost the whole game and wouldn't even pay for it? Always read the terms of service. Uh-huh. Act of God. What is it called? Force majeure clause or some total crap like that. And let's face it. They didn't have any money left for a legal action. Oh, yeah, that's probably true as well. Wasn't there a copy of the game, a backup? Well, we know the answer to this. Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. Suna would disagree with you. She believes that being in the basement of the same physical location counts as off-site. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. And what did Suna say? S. Lukanen Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me. Not after eight months of crunch. Oh, uh-huh. Ooh, eight months. Jeez. I didn't have a home anymore. So I started keeping it in the basement in the ice bear refrigerator near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. It's not very convincing, is it? Her former colleagues would agree with you. Is there anything else from Suna? The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Let's read the notes to the end. Four months later, by an unknown author. I am the only one left and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under too. Slipstream switched to making skis and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez, all of it. So this might corroborate what Placent says about this place being cursed, although it could just be that Martinez is a total mess anyway. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I wonder if it was the church and the, the hole into the pale. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachol West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. 
The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Yeah, that's the church, I believe. Saint Brune 1147. That's what the street sign next to the church said. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. Look at that. My reaction speed was as fast as uh, the game's reaction speed. All right, let's tear off the printout and throw it away because that's our only choice. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. All right, let's remove the production schedule. The filament slides out of its glowing nest. And I believe that is worth 50 real. Oh, here we go. It is, and we might just be completely done with it. Uh, so... I know there's a check for the dice person. Let's go see what that is. Novelty dice maker shippers. Okay. Let's see if we can increase our shivers. Right now, we have plus one on shivers. Let's see if we can increase our shivers. No, 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 no. I really want to put this on just because uh, drama plus electrochemistry seems like a party. No. Ah, plus one shivers, minus two physical instrument. Let's do it. Okay. And we drop two drama by doing that. And our physical instrument has got to be garbage right now. So it's two. Okay, well, it's not as bad as I would have thought. Okay, let's go talk to the dice maker, whose name I cannot remember. Rhea? Something like that? Come on, guys. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? Okay, why hasn't her business failed? Okay, we're at 58%. This is Shivers is uh, physical. Yeah, it's pink. It's physical. So, um, or it's physique. So we're getting plus one from the wine too, I guess. All right, 58%. It's white. We can always retry if we want later. A gust of cold oh, air sweeps nice. through the chimney. The stones and minerals on the shelves rattle as though agitated. For a moment, it almost feels as though you're outside the building, exposed to the atmosphere. Hmm. We have two choices. We can say the curse is real and we figured out why it has spared her, or we can say it's just a theory, but hear me out. I think I know why your business hasn't failed. I mean, she would argue her business hasn't failed because she doesn't spend much money. But I, do we have we figured out that the curse is real? I want the curse to be real, but I don't think the curse is real. Let's say the second one. This is still just a theory, but hear me out. I think I know why your business hasn't failed. Didn't we already talk about this? <laughs> I guess we did. It's because you're not in the same building as the others. This isn't technically the doomed commercial area. What are you talking about? My address is exactly the same. Rue de Sanguelan 10. But you're in the chimney. No. The old coal plant that used to be here was subsumed into the new venture. Its ruins swallowed up, yet it has a different address in the heart of the city. Cool. No, this used to be a coal plant. Touch the safety curtains. You're in a chimney of another building. This doesn't make any sense. She looks around the makeshift nest that she has carved out for herself, bewildered. Are you saying my business was spared because of a technicality? Where is this coming from? Let's say I have my own methods. Unusual methods. And what? Does it mean that I'm safe from failure? No one's really ever safe from failure, Nea. She starts laughing, her fingers trying to rub away the exhaustion from her face. What? Do you know what this is? She raises her hand to reveal a piece of metal shining on her index finger. A lucky charm? A Seminese ward? It's a morning ring. I made this when my first company failed. It was a small jewelry shop right here in the East Delta Commerce Center, built with the little I inherited from my parents. I drove it into the ground within a year. I didn't have what you would call a viable business plan. See? The curse is real. I bet you didn't run this little jewelry shop from the protective depths of the chimney. No, you're right. I didn't. <laughs> uh, she laughs again, but it sounds rather small and sad. It wasn't just a jewelry shop either. I always thought that it was just the world that you were supposed to try again and again until you finally succeed. I mean, what's your other choice? And now you're telling me what? 
that it was all because I didn't run my little shops and ventures from a dump inside an abandoned chimney? I really don't know which of these to pick. Don't call it a dump, you've made it nice and cozy here. Yeah. Or maybe it's the entire world that's cursed. It's such a precarious place. Nothing ever works out the way you want it. That is true. That's why people like role-playing games. You can be whoever you want to be, you can try again. Still, there is something inherently violent even about dice rolls. Yes, I agree with all of that. It's like every time you cast a die, something disappears. Some alternative ending or an entirely different world. He picks up a pair of dice from the table and examines them under the light. Yes, that's true. And also, this is very meta. But anyway, thanks for sharing your theories, officer. He gives us a tired smile. We gain five experience. Oh, the, we got a new thought. The precarious world. Okay, we'll check that out. Let's check it out right now. The precarious world. The temporary research bonuses. All red checks fail for the next four hours. Ooh, but it doesn't affect any stats. Let's read the description. The precarious world. Temporary research bonus, all red checks fail, research time four hours, but doesn't have any stat effects. Seems like the point of this game is victory. The absence of defeat on all fronts. Victory in business ventures and creative undertakings. Victory in love and over other people. Political victory, ideological victory. Hell, even sexual victory. Definitely a lot of object-based victories too, having things and not losing them. One problem though, not a lot of victors in sight. Everyone's mostly losing. Why is that? And how do you not lose? I might do that. That sounds interesting. And we don't have a ton of red checks, I assume, coming up. That might be fun. That might be fun. Okay, we're done with Neha. Probably forever. Okay, thanks, Neha. Talk to you later. I'm gonna leave it here for today. We accomplished nothing we set out to do, but we did get a bunch of other cool stuff done. That does seem to be the Disco Elysium way. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and all that jazz. It really helps with content discovery. Meanwhile, please remember to spay or neuter your pets, but not both.